Self-realization is a challenging task, especially for the youth. But once you discover it, you can conquer any mountain or valley that you come across. Let's hear Gloria Acheng. Karibu sana to the show. Salute. What can you tell us? What was the inspiration to become a free uh, freelance psychologist? I started freelancing like two years ago. I used to work in a hospital setup. Mm-hmm. And at times we could go to the medical wards aside from the psychiatric unit. Mm-hmm. And most of the or most of the patients at the medical wards were not really uh, really aware of issues to do with their mental issues. And they could relate psychological issues to physical problems. Mm-hmm. And I decided to go out and into the community and do more of awareness and also go and reach out to those particular people who are not able to access the mental health care and also who are not really into who, who do not really have knowledge about what was really going on in their mind. Okay. Speaking of going out, how do you go about your day to day uh, task as a freelance psychologist? I network a lot, mm-hmm. one thing, and I also partner with other organizations in getting clients. So other organizations refla- re- re- refer clients to me, mm-hmm. and at times I do facilitation or trainings for staff of other organizations. So if they have other clients coming for checkups or any other issues related to what they're doing in their organizations, they are able to refer the clients to me. And I also work with other institutions like the Kisumu Remind Home. Mm-hmm. And Kisumu Remind Home, they, they have mostly social workers. Mm-hmm. So I come in as a counselor and I offer my services to the children and I also train the social workers. Uh, Let's go back to the basics. Why psychology? Is it something you've always wanted to do or something you did out of experience? I am very familiar. I have always been familiar with issues to do with mental illnesses from a very young age. I have grown around depression and I also have a sibling who has neurodevelopmental disorder. So it's something that I grew wanting to find solutions to. And when I finished high school, that is what I knew I wanted to do. But at that time, it wasn't really clear that it was psychology that I I was focusing on. So I had to ask questions, a lot of questions. And when I narrowed down to it, people used to tell me that, (laughs) unataka kudil na machizi. And... It was also stigmatizing because mm-hmm. if someone tells you something like that and it's, that is the same thing that you see in your own house, so it was not really a good introduction into it, mm-hmm. but I decided that that is what I wanted to do and that is something that I'm doing right now. That's interesting. And uh, speaking of uh, yeah. it being at the background of your family, didn't you have some conflicting ideas that what if I cannot move on from whatever I have seen? Yes, there was. Mm. And I have also been diagnosed with it, with, with depression. And I felt that it might reach a time that I was not, I will not be able to serve as how or how I wanted it. But through... Uh, the experience that I've, through, through the whole journey, through the whole experience, mm-hmm. we also have support in psychology. So I don't have to deal with things alone. Mm-hmm. And I also have a counselor. My counselor has a counselor and it's just like that. Yeah, so it's a chain. Effect, yeah, it's yeah? a chain. So if I do, if I have a lot of clients and I feel like I'm being drained, I just go for support and then... In support, they deal with my issues, 
mm. plus the issues that I have in the field. <laughs> yeah. And at the end of the day, I feel better and in a position to help someone else in also feeling better. Wow. That is so strong of you, considering that you have your own issues, now you're dealing with someone else's, and it's so selfless. I would love to congratulate you on that. Thank you. And uh, speaking with you, you talked about something called Sulev Mo. Let's talk about that. What is it and what does it entail? Okay, Sulev Mo is an organization right now, and we are close to celebrating one year. And the whole background of Sulev Mo is that I've gained experience from working in other organizations and you cannot solve everything as one person. So you must come together and find solutions together. So I'm a co-founder and we came together as different counselors and social workers and different professions to come together and bring like holistic solutions. So if you come to the organization, you'll find we have dancers, we have our drama teachers, we have so many different people doing different things. But at the end, we are focusing on mental wellness. Okay. You've spoken about uh, having dancers and a variety of activities. Are these ways in which you use to address mental issues as Sulev Mo, or how do you use, how do you address the issues? The dancers, and we also, we, we have a drama department in the organization. And we use this drama and music and dance as a way to tell stories and also to offer comfort and also to spread hope. Because mm. when you listen or you watch what we're doing, most of the narrations come from the stories of the children and the stories of the youths. Mm. And also even the children at times write their own scripts. Mm. So what we do is we actualize their scripts. Okay. Yeah. And uh, do you have a specific group that you work exclusively with? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I work with the children remand home. And in the remand home, there are two types of groups. There are children who have committed offenses and children who are under care and protection. And we offer counseling to them. And we are there twice a week. And we have days that we do counseling we provide our own counselors to the children and we also have the drama and the music and poetry and dance with them and that is meant to engage them to rehabilitate them and also for them to it's not easy for them to open up to us yeah. but if we provide that environment it is easy for them to tell us exactly what they're going through and why they're there and we also take part in providing solutions to them and we take them home at times when their cases are done in court, things like that. So we make sure if we are being part of that child's life, we don't only solve the solution at the remand home. We also extend the support to the, wherever he or he came from. So we also go back to their homes and do counseling. We do family therapy, we do reunification, and we make sure by the time we leave that child back home, we are leaving that child in a safer environment. Mm. So why the decision to work with the children at a remand home? You could have worked with any other group in the society, but you decided, let us go in here. At the remand home, the, there's no formal education. That is one. And they, before we joined them, they relied on themselves and also other organizations and other well-wishers to come and help them rehabilitate the children. And when we went and started working with them, we decided to offer other things that were not in their, in their curriculum or whatever they were doing in the remand home. Mm -hmm. So we just wanted to uplift these children and we just wanted to make them aware that they were not alone and then give them hope and also make them recognize that they still have another chance to life mm -hmm. and it just does not just end there and they can also just live through the process and work with us and go through the re rehabilitation the counseling and still come out and go back to their homes and continue from where they left 
we also work with the children in the community as a preventive measure yeah so that they don't end up in the remand home mm. yeah. so what kind of uh, things do you do with them to, as a preventive measure it's more of awareness creation mm. and we not only talk to the children we also talk to the parents so at times we hold conversations with the children at times we hold conversations with households mm. and at, when we we are targeting a community at times it's on need basis mm. like another organization can be doing a certain program in that community and then reach out to us and tell us so this this community and the children or the youth in this community are at risk so we go there and then we make up um, a program that we know it will be of help into that community mm -hmm. and uh, as a psychologist what do you think are the specific problems that uh, become so extensive that children have to go to the remand home and how can we get a solution to them okay uh, most of the issues that come up are issues to do with neglect and neglect maybe from parents or from the community also because community play a big part in raising a child and there's also issues with poverty because so many children who come to the remand home don't have a very let's say good formal in formal education some are up to 16 or 18 and they've reached class 4 or class 3 and most of the children also in the remand home are not from kisumu just mm -hmm. a few of them are from kisumu okay. so most of the children come from nakuru and then most of them are from western and they rarely have good formal education and there's also a lot of issues to do with peer pressure a lot of issues to do with um adolescents because uh, the the other ones that are brought through care and protection are the ones that might have been uh minus in a relationship yes okay so and how has that journey been so far since you started being that you have experienced depression and you are now a psychologist. How has that journey been so far? And being part of Sulev more, how has it helped? Okay. Uh, the journey has been challenging. <laughs> yeah, it's really challenging. Because uh, throughout, the more I've, I've been, I've been uh, learning about mental health and mental wellness and all my journey through psychology, it's been really eye-opening to me. Because I get to know myself to know my strengths and also to know my weaknesses and to know how to deal with them and i was not diagnosed with depression before i knew about before before campus in fact it was during my my campus years mm -hmm. and it was because i was more aware of things that were happening to me or around me and that is when and it happened and i got I, I went downhill, <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. but through support of my of my teachers and other counselors, I am where I am. And transferring from the hospital setup to the freelance setup is also stressful, because we work more hours, mm -hmm. and you have to be somewhere. You can't just stay at home and receive clients. So I have to be in activities, in events, I have to organize, I have to be almost everywhere at the same time. Mm. So it's stressful. It's so many hours and a lot of determination and you also need a lot of support because mm. you can't do it on your own. And you also has, have to start somewhere because I started doing pro bono work and that is how I got clients. And right now, it's still challenging. It's, yeah, I have not really, it's a journey. It's a journey. <laughs> yeah. In an African setting, yeah, mental health is taken so lightly. Why do you think this is? I'll explain this by just describing a scenario. We had um, a research 
I was taking part in a research that we did a few months ago and we're dealing with the youths and the children. Mm -hmm. And not all of them really understood what, what mental health was. And as much as we would like to, to see ourselves as, uh, as, as very as aware of mental health issues, mm -hmm. it was really clear at that point that we have moved forward, but we've actually left a lot of people behind. Mm -hmm. So the children, there are some people who could try and explain by, by just by naming illnesses or conditions. So someone could tell you stress. Someone could even say pressure, because that is what they hear their parents say, "Nikwana pressure," and it's actually stress or depression. So we, our community, we are not really aware of what is what is mental health and how we can come together and help each other. And all I, what I got from the whole discussion was that we really need to go back from the start and start afresh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. How can we do this? We just need to go back to the basics mm -hmm. and go back to the community. We do very good outreaches and awarenesses in schools, in communities. Because if I empower someone, one person from a community, that person is able to go back and empower that community. Mm -hmm. So we just work with the people we have, with the resources we have, but go back to the roots mm -hmm. and start all over again. Because yeah. even right now, the people who are a little bit aware also get a lot of things mixed up. Mm -hmm. So if you talk to them about mental health, and mental illnesses, they're different, but they're not able to, to distinguish, to distinguish the them. Okay. Briefly tell us the difference. The difference. So mental health is the overall well-being of an individual. So it's the physical, the social, the psychological, the economic. Mm -hmm. It's every aspect in your life. So it's, you can't be well if one thing is off. So it's everything that a human being needs in order to be okay. Yeah, that is mental health. Okay. And mental illnesses now are the conditions associated with mental health. So if you tell someone mental health, someone will tell you stress or depression, mm. but it's not really that. Okay. So the illnesses are now the conditions that are associated with mental health. Wow, I also did not, re I just realized I did not know the difference. And um, speaking of uh, not understanding exactly what is happening, most people suffer in silence, quote unquote. So as a psychologist, what is the remedy for this? People are suffering in silence. Mm. And okay, uh, the issue was also brought up on world's mental Men Mental Health Day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a few months ago, and what we realized by then is that as a community, we don't have a talking culture. And the talking culture came from when we were young. Mm -hmm. The uh, example when uh, it's let's say a boy fights with another person and then he comes back crying, they'll tell him, "Be a man." Yeah. Yeah, and we, we, the talking culture was not embraced when we were young. And it was not also to the boys, but it was also to an extent to some communities. In some communities, to some extent, also the girls do not embrace the talking, talking culture. cultures. Mm -hmm. So we don't have that in our community. We don't have that in some of the families. And if we want to be somewhere or if we want to be able to bring interventions that are to help our community in tackling mental health issues mm -hmm. that is where i think we should start mm -hmm. and and also the talking culture needs a collective effort because if i decide to talk to you about my problem and then you go and tell someone else and tell yeah. someone else yeah. then you're not encouraging me to come to you when i'm when I have a problem. So it's mental health issues. It's not something that only one person can solve. So we need to come together 
as a community in the different relationships that we have, whether it's your partner, your friends, your sisters. Mm -hmm. And if we are encouraging people to talk, to open up and to find solutions, then we also need to encourage us uh, offering safe spaces to people and also listening to people in order to make them open up and you can advise or you can decide to find help from someone else. Okay. And going back to self-realization, what can you tell the youth, a youth member who is trying to find their footing, say in career or business, but they don't know what to do as you have done? They need to recognize who they are, first of all. And if you know who you are, then you know your strengths, you know your weaknesses, and you know when you need support mm. and how you can need support. So when it comes to the youths who are still finding themselves, you cannot offer something that you don't know. So it really requires you to actually learn not only yourself, but you learn your community and you, who you're working with, who you're dealing with. And it requires a lot of research also. And when you actually learn about who you are and how far you can go and how your challenges uh, affect you personally, then it is also easy for you to offer a service or to help someone else or to start something that, that is very sustainable because mm -hmm. you're able to just listen to yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much for coming to the show. I have learned the difference between mental health and issues and mental yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm still confused, but I'm learning. But uh, what you're doing is really uplifting. It's mm -hmm. to live more. And uh, having to listen to someone else's problem while you're going through your own is a sign of strength. Yeah, no, I will sure. commend you for that. Okay. So thank you so much. If you know who you are, you're able to identify your strengths you're able to identify what you need and when you need help from someone else, it is easy to look for it and the solution will come to you. See you next time. This has been Youth in Action. This is the way to do it. This is the way.